guys, it's Dakota. I hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to my channel. Look where I am. I'm finally back in the witch cottage. Yay. Um, it's a nice day outside today and I thought I'm going to get out here and do my video tomorrow. Um, it's supposed to be, I don't know, they're calling for slight rain showers. Um, I don't know if it's going to come or not, but I decided I'm going to come out here today and, and do my video. So. Uh, today's video, I think, is kind of, it was kind of fun, and it was one of those just sort of fluke things that, that I decided to talk about today. Um, usually I have something, you know, planned that I want to do, but today I didn't. So this morning I went out, and I gave, was, you know, giving my horse some love, and, um, and, and that's what drew my mind to, to talk about this subject. So, um, and that is the subject of fairy or fae. We're going to talk a little bit about that, um, and and but mostly about the uh, fairy locks is what they're called, the little dreadlock things that fair um, that horses get uh, in their manes. So that's what I wanted to talk about today. But before I go there, uh, let me just so I, I want to make sure that I'm clear on this. So fairy spelled F A I. R Y F A I R Y. Those, uh, according to you know whatever history and stuff that I looked up, those are your sweet little fairies. Those are the ones like the little winged, cute little I don't know um, pixie type fairies um, that you, you you know you might see in cartoons and stuff like that. Little yeah, you know, little they're they're sweet. They're 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 gentle. They're sweet little little things. And then you have F-A-E-R-Y, fairy, as opposed to fairy. Um, so F-A-E-R-Y, and according to what I read, uh, fairy, spelled F-A-E-R-Y, they are the ones that are more mischievous. They might have some, you know, some malintent, um, and... Uh, you know, so the, those were the ones that they said might be, you know, a little on that, like, kind of scary side. Um, I don't know. You know, I, I'm not really sure about that. Before I go, and, and F-A-E-R-Y, um, they call those uh, fear she. And what that means is man of she. Uh so she is S I D H E is pronounced she, and um, so it, it's called man of she. So when I think of that, and I think she, I think banshee, <laughs> and so then I think you know the banshees were are, are kind of like you know the scarier ones, I guess if you will. Um, so I decided, well, let me do you know a quick little thing today. And so I have the Fairy Oracle by uh, Brian Froud. I'm not sure. I might probably have spelled it wrong. But anyway, uh, the Fairy Oracle. And it's a really, really cute deck. But now he has one chapter in there called The She. And uh, he, I didn't read the whole thing. But the very first paragraph, he refers to the uh, fairy, F-A-E-R-Y, um, as the, uh, uh, the gods and goddesses to the fairy, F-A-E-R-Y. So he doesn't say anything about any kind of, at least in that, that little paragraph that I read, he doesn't, uh, refer to anything about, you know, oh, they're malicious or they're, um, you know, they're bad or any kind of thing like that. But, um, in his cards, I just pulled two at random. I just pulled two, and I don't know Oracle. I don't really know this deck very well. Uh, I just pulled these two at random so that you could just kind of see how, um, you know, for me, when I think of fairy, I always think more like this, you know, the sweet little winged creature and tends to your flowers and, you know, is friends with the insects and the toads and, and all of that. And um, just, you know, la, 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 fun little fairies. And then when I think of fairy, F-A-E-R-Y, 
And I think of, you know, that more, um, I don't know, mischievous and maybe kind of, you know, might have some malintent there or whatever, malintent, um, I'm going to have to talk to Coda. <laughs> so these then are what I see as what I would consider F-A-E-R-Y. They are a little more mischievous looking, you know, like, what? And so, um, yeah, so, but I didn't read his whole book on it. I didn't read the whole article on the, the she, as he refers to them, other than he said the she are the, uh, the fairy, and he used the F-A-E-R-Y are the, and the she are the gods and goddesses of the fairy. So, um, so anyway, okay, so I just wanted to make that clear. Now, I use the word fae, and I don't, I just spell it F-A-E. I don't know why, but that's just how I spell it. Um, I don't, I use that word as a shortcut. <laughs> Instead of saying fairy, 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 and spelling it out, I just use the word fae, unless I'm, specifically want to spell it out so that you know which one I'm talking about. So I'll be just calling them the Fae. Um, okay, so as you saw in, in the very first part of the video, uh, that was my horse, that's Starbuck, nothing to do with the coffee. Uh, it was way before I even knew about Starbucks, the coffee, to be quite honest with you. Um, but you can see how his mane is all looks like something I did. I did not. I promise you, I did not because those things are a pain in the you know what to get out. Um, and he, he, the only time he really lets me groom on him for any length of period is like the farriers they're working on his feet, you know, because then he's only got three legs down on the ground, the other one she's working on. Um, but uh, he'll only, he, he likes to be brushing, but he only let me brush him for so long. So, um, but they're really hard to get out. Um, they're very, very difficult to get out. You can't just brush them and they fall out. I've got little picks and stuff to uh, open up the braids to get them out. So those are called different names. Sometimes they're called fairy knots, fairy locks. Uh, they're called uh, druid locks. They're called elf locks, witches knots. Um, dread locks and um, some people also refer to the fairy, the fae, f-a-e-r-y, f-a-i-r-y, also as the fair folk because okay, so you have all these these names. Now there is a, uh, there's something you can google if you're interested in this. It's um, called Urban Folklore. It is a research paper that was done in, um, at the School of Welsh, uh, the University of Cardiff. And um, it was a, a, like a term paper or something uh, that this person wrote on um, the fairy, the fae, and um, also, um, excuse me one second. Okay, sorry. Um, I saw something fall and I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a spider. Anyway, um, it's like a term paper that, that the person wrote um, about, specifically about uh, fairy locks on, on horses. And, um, but it, of course, because it's like a term paper, there's a lot of information in there that I found very, very insightful, very helpful. So I took a little bit from that and um, that's what I'll talk about today. All right, so folklore has it that the fae would come out, they come out at night and they come out searching, wandering around, searching for a horse. And when they find a horse that they like, they choose that horse, then they go to work and they make these fairy knots. And <clears throat> the knots are used as stirrups, like a saddle, so they get on the horse and the, the fairy knots then work like stirrups and reins for them to hold on to. And then they take the horse and they ride around all throughout the night. Um, they go on these magical adventures. Um, 
through the underworld or not the underworld the other world uh, maybe the underworld i don't know but these other realms these other worlds and uh, just on these magical adventures all through the night and then they bring the horses back before daybreak and and then they just leave them so when you go out to feed your horse in the morning your horse has all these dreadlocks you know basically in in their hair all these twists and braids and knots and i mean bad it I, I swear to you if you have a horse then you know what i'm talking about it literally looks like they've taken this and they've just tied it in knots all the way down they've gone like this and made them in a mushy mesh <laughs> and um you can't just like take the brush and brush through them you literally have to take picks and pick at it or i have i have these little tiny scissors I, because i don't have the patience to do that and i'll just kind of make little cuts throughout each like each little thing like if this was a, if this was an all matted thing i just take the scissors and I'll, I'll clip 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 different areas and then brush it uh try to brush it out but they're really really hard to brush out so um yeah so then you you come out and you're like oh i just brushed you yesterday and now you have these these fairy locks again well if you brush them out word has it that that's bad luck you're not supposed to do that um that's according to folklore because what happens is if the fae come back that night and all their hard work is gone now they're upset they're mad because they have to do it all over again and i'm telling you i have seen that happen more than once i have brushed them gotten everything out come out the next day and I, he's got fairy locks in his hair so i don't know that's just what i've read and according to this um, research paper it's in there as well so um, the other thing is in in Shakespeare's uh, Romeo and Juliet there was um, uh, Mercutio let's see when Mercutio was talking to um, Queen Mab Queen Mab, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, this is what he, this is the speech that he says to her. She is the fairy's midwife and she comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone that plates the manes of horses in the night and bakes the elf locks in foul sluttish hairs, which once untangled, much misfortune bodes. And that's going back to Shakespeare, you know, so, uh, and Romeo and Juliet. So then you have to go, hmm, well, is there something to this, you know, or if this is just folklore from ancient times, don't know. In the Middle Ages, horses that were found sweating, like in the barn, the next day you go out and your horse is sweating and his hair is all mangled then it's because um those were referred to that then the uh elf knots were referred to back in the middle ages and those were referred to as the hag riders as hag riders that meant that um they were called they were called hag rider knots sorry i had to look i had to look i was like wait that doesn't make sense um they were called hag rider knots and those were made by witches so the witches would come and they would do the same thing that the fae did you know they would um make these uh knots and um and then they and then they would ride the horses and <clears throat> um yeah and so then they would ride they would ride the horses so 
I have if y'all know what a hagstone is um, I don't think I have any out here but uh, we find them at the beach a lot um, it's a stone that has a um, a hole in the middle of it we find them in the beach because usually if you have a rock and you lay it and water uh, sits in one spot you know it eats away and eats away and eats away and eventually it makes us this hole so what the what the people would do is they would find a, a hag stone if indeed they went out and the horse was sweating and his mane was knotted with that meant that those were knots made by the hag riders which were witches so they would take the hag stone and they would hang it up by the door for protection to keep away the witches. So, um, so there was that story, which was kind of fun and interesting. Um, one of the other things that the person who wrote the article or the research paper mentions is that if you wake up in the morning and your body is just so sore, like you just had a major workout the day before and you know, you're just so sore and your hair is matted. It means that the witches came and they, they shapeshift you. They transformed you. Actually, they transformed you into a horse, into one of these animals and, um, and rode you. So that meant they knotted your hair and, and, and would ride you. Um, so, uh, yeah, so there, you know, so that was kind of funny. The story that, um, I, you know, that I don't know, <sighs> made me just shake my head, you know, it just really made me shake, shake my head. And this was in the research paper. Again, if you want to read it, it's uh, called urban folklore. Uh, University of Cardiff uh, School of Welsh. Well, apparently the um, the fundamental um, Christians um, refer to the tangling of a horse mane as a satanic. Um, ritual, I guess, a, a, a satanic working, if you will. Um, and, and that was to instill fear into the people. Because as the research paper goes on, and they did a very, very good job, very thorough job of researching these um, fairy knots. And but if you if you continue to read about that, um, you'll see that most like when you dissect it and you research it the way they did, really, <laughs> I hate to admit it, but the the fairy locks most likely because I'm going to say most likely because there's a chance that it might be something else, but most likely it's caused to the horse owners, uh, lack of maintenance. <laughs> and um, so that may be true sometimes, but maybe not all the time, <laughs> because we had, uh, my farrier was out last week and he had already started getting some, some locks. And she said, and I was sitting with the, the little brush trying to get them out while she was doing his feet, but he can't get them with a the brush. So when then when she was done, she's like, you better get those out of him before they get any worse. And I go, yeah, I know. And I never did. And now you saw his whole, his whole mane. <sighs> so that is going to take a long time to get those out. I'm going to have to get the little scissor things and cut them and see if he'll let me uh, brush on them for a while. So, um, you know, so let's just, let's just go with this. Yeah. It probably does have to do with the lack of maintenance sometimes, but maybe not all the time. Because <laughs> I love the story of the Fae coming in the night and riding my beautiful horse uh, 
going on magical adventures, you know, I wish that they would take me with them. I mean, you know, it just sounds like a really fun thing. I just wish that when they were done that they would uh, clean up because why do I have to clean up after them? <laughs> um, the last thing I just want to say is that, you know, when we talk about the fairy or the fae, whatever you like to call them, um, you know, and me personally, this is just me personally, I don't necessarily believe in the actual, um, the actual, you know, the actual form of the fairy. I mean, when I hear fairy, this is what I see in my head, the little winged, you know, creature. I mean, that's what I see, but for me it is more about an energy it is more about that energy um but that being said because look and it might be you know i'm kind of i, I i'm superstitious uh my grandmother was <laughs> let me tell you my grandmother loved jesus she <laughs> she was uh she was a religious woman but never ever 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 in my lifetime, did the word God, did the word Jesus, did the word, are you going to church, any of that stuff, did that ever come up? Never. Not with my grandmother, not with my mother. Thank you. <laughs> I, I am, I was not raised in a religious upbringing, and I had free will to, to explore, and that was great. But anyway, my, my grandmother, uh, I mean, there was Jesus all over the house and whatever they're called, um, crucifixes and stuff all over, crucifix? I don't know, crosses all over the house. And, um, and she was very, very superstitious. And I remember my grandmother telling me, don't ever step in a fairy ring. So, um, and you know, she, she showed me what they were, you know, the mushrooms make fairy rings and stuff like that. And, and I never have, you know, like I just never have. Um, sometimes I get like that little, you know, that little, view, that little devil over here on this shoulder. Come on, do it, do it. Hey, and maybe that's the F-A-E-R-Y, Fay, right? Maybe that's the fairy, um, you know, the, the she. <laughs> uh, but um, sometimes I think, you know, guys, just do it. I mean, it's just a ring of mushrooms, just do it. But I don't. Well, why don't I? And why do I, in my garden, leave stones? My stones have, I have crystals, there's rose quartz. I mean, there's all kinds of stones in my garden from different spell works, um, you know, things like that. Uh, certain spell works that I, I don't bury the stones. I'm not going to just bury the stone. I put it in the garden. And, um, and I'll leave, I have these little bowls for outdoors, little, little small little bowls like that. Honey, milk, uh, and I've, I have even left little little toys, you know, that you, you just, you find them wherever, you know, like just, I don't know, whatever. There's like little army soldiers and little things like that um, that I leave for the gnomes. And again, you know, I'm not really sure I've never seen a gnome, so I don't know. But you know, they don't live in this realm. So I and so I get that. But I definitely believe in that energy. So I don't know. Maybe I'm contradicting myself. You know, it's just it's just that thing. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk about the fairy knots and um, the, a little bit of the folklore about it. I thought it was really fun that if go on that, um, I don't, I just Googled and, 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 and it came up, Urban Folklore School of Welsh University of Cardiff. And um, yeah, it was really very, it was very, very interesting uh, that, that he did. It wasn't an article, it was a paper that, like his research term paper or something, uh, or she, he or she, I didn't even look at that. Um, but regardless, it was very good. Had a lot of uh, researched information. There's references, etc. And um, so, yeah, I thought it was really good. 
Okay, so that's what I have to say today about the Fae and about uh, the fairy knots. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun with it. I uh, hope it gave you some food for thought. Let me know your feelings on the Fae. What do you think? Um, you know, have you seen them? What Do you do anything for the fairies, like out in your garden or out in the woods or, or whatever? Um, you know, just how do you feel about it? All right. Um, I'm glad to be back in the witch cottage. Um, I hope that uh, we are now in, we're out of false spring. <laughs> I hope that we are now in spring and um, look forward to seeing you guys next time. Take care. Thank you all so much for watching my channel. I truly appreciate it. I really, really do. Spread the word. would like to get the numbers up a little bit. Um, you know, I, anyway, if you want, if not, that's fine too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I re I'm talking to my friend because uh, you know who you are and um, she said it was like when she watches my videos, it's like having a chat with me. So hope you enjoyed our chat. Talk to you later, guys. Bye.